Hello, and welcome to Dickinson's Real Deal. On this show, I help members of the public get the very best price for their antiques and valuables. Our dealers today are Hoggy, Henry, <laughs> Jan, and <laughs> David. They try it on. You know which ones. I thought you were going to persuade Elizabeth to take my very generous offer. I would if it was generous, but I don't think it's generous enough. So, has the price got to reflect the size, do you think? Five to eight hundred is the estimation. Uh, that, I apologize, that's the area. Thank you. Go to the auction if you fancy a gamble. It really is exciting. Wow, what a fantastic price. Today the show comes to you from Stanford in Lincolnshire. Look at this crowd. They've been here since early this morning. They've brought along their treasures. I've got a feeling it's a great day for us today. Is there going to be something fantastic come through the door? There's a real buzz. Everybody here wants to walk out of this room with the real deal. Kicking off the day at Jan Keane's table is Nigel, and he's brought in a real deal favourite. Ten rare basic footballing cats. I would like to get £200 for them. Does £20 a puss seem reasonable to you, Jan? What will I be putting down? Five... Eight pounds each, maybe? I'm not even sure about that. You could be showing Jan a red card, Nigel. Well, would you like to tell me about these little friends you brought in today? Well, my wife and I took several years collecting them. The ten comprise the whole set. If David Beckham was number 11, I'd want a lot more money from you than I'm looking for today. Yes, of course. Why sell them now? Downsizing what? Well, downsizing. <laughs> Our children aren't interested no, in them. No, I know. It's sadly, um, isn't it? I come from Cardiff. We don't play with balls like that in Wales. It should be oval, so oh, I see. they don't so, attract me that no. much. No. I mean, I don't know much about them. I can see they're, they're quite charming. We've got a nice clear mark here, of course, for John Beswick and with the date clearly stamped on each one, I believe, 1987. And just out of interest then, what were you paying for these cats when you were buying them? Can you remember? Quite a lot. What do you call quite a lot? Well, more than I think I would expect today. I suppose you'll tell me after we've done the deal anyway. After we've if done I the buy deal. Them, or if, if I don't buy don't, them, you could tell me. Let me start by putting a £20 note on the table. I don't think you're going to be too impressed no, with that. No, no, I don't even like the colour. <laughs> Well, I could go to a brown one. If we say uh, thirty pounds, I think I'm miles away, aren't I? Miles away. Yeah. Pause for thought. Fifty pounds. We're nowhere near it at the moment, Jan. Well, no, I, I was going to we say were. the sidelines rubbish, actually. To tell you <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me, Jan, but I, I was going to say rubbish. I don't mind. Now, the estimation is as low as 120 and goes up to £200. So, I suppose that is somewhere around £12 to £20 per figure. The question is, what will they fetch in an auction? Certainly, I would have thought they're going to fetch the 120 area, which is £12 a piece. I'm going to say, because of the effort of collecting jam, it's worth a bit more than this. Right, Nigel, well, I must admit, I would no idea that the estimate was going to be anywhere around there. So, of course, I'm miles away. So there we go. I'm going to put £70 down, but I still have a feeling that I'm a long way off from what you really want and what you might get at auction. Yes, I think I'd have to take the first. I think you do, really. All the best then, too. You'll have yeah. a great day out with David. And would you like to tell me now, because it doesn't really make any odds, what you actually paid for each of these figurines? I think the least we paid was £40 for a figurine. Well, I hope you do really well and at Thank least get part of your money back. Thank you very much. So it's off to auction, but Nigel's upped his reserve to £180. Does our auctioneer Colin Young think he's priced himself out? That's going to have to now be upped, up the game a little bit, and it may well be that we scare off the odd buyer. Well, ten pounds, anyway. Let's hope you're ten, wrong, four, Colin. Four, ten, five to go, then five to five, five to eight. So, Thank Nigel, what do you think? Are they going to sell? Well, I hope they sell, but if they don't, it doesn't matter. I'll put them in a box, wrap yeah. them up, 
address them to my daughter and say, open in 2024. Okay. Because what goes around comes around. Coming up now, 10 fabulous Beswick Cat footballers. Okay, it's just, just, just a bit of fun. Are they going to sell at 120 quid? I don't know. Let's find out. Now who's going to start me at... Uh... Start with hundred pounds, we get on. Hundred straight in, hundred pound bid at one hundred ten to a C now. One hundred pound a bid at one hundred, one ten, one twenty, one thirty, one forty, one fifty now. At one sixty is all about one sixty. One seventy surely, one seventy with you. One eighty, at one eighty, one ninety now. At one hundred and eighty, we all done at one hundred and eighty. Last call, you're out in the room this time. At one hundred and eighty, we sell that at one eighty. They've scored. Boom! A hundred and eighty quid right in the back of the net. We've got some commission to take away. I make that £147 coming home with you. What is your first thoughts of that? David, I'm very pleased. Any idea what you're going to spend the money on, Nigel? Um, probably to send the wife away so I have a week's holiday. Did you hear that? Don't write into me. He's going to send the missus away so he can have a week's peace and a week's holiday. Hey, no more. That's the real deal. Well done, Nigel. But you might be in trouble when the missus watches this. Back in the den, David serving up something that's got Michael Hogburn swaying at the table. I've tried the Bollinger. David and I were drinking it at lunch. It's rather nice. Ha ha, very funny, Hoggy. You're supposed to buy it first. Where did you get that from? Well, my lady's late husband had the bottle given him about... 45 years ago and he passed away and left it uh, yeah. obviously to the family yeah and, and it's been in the cupboard for about 30 years uh, I, I know it's not drinkable but uh, no well but, uh, you see the thing about champagne and wine is often drinkable when it's that old but a lot depends on how it's stored so if a bottle is stored down like that there's a good chance it will last a lot lot longer little tip at home for you that one because if it's up like that the cork dries out and then the stuff starts to escape from it. So has it been laid down or has it been standing up? Uh, I think part of its life was laid down, but in the last few years, it's been stood up. Yeah. So if we take a close look at this, I will have to put my reading glasses on, but we've got a label here, which is superb, and it's extra quality, very dry, Bollinger. Champagne, 1928 vintage. <laughs> It's fabulous and then up at the top here this would have been covered up completely with like a foil which protects the cork and then we just got the Bollinger label on the front there Bollinger David was well it is one of the top ranks your, your Dom Perignon your Crystal Krug and then you've got your Bollinger a well-known French champagne house so you're just selling it today just because we came along and you thought see how much it's worth yeah yeah that's that's it really yeah I haven't really got a clue how much it's worth but I do know how much I want to pay for it, so that's what matters to me, really. And I would like to pay you the grand sum of, say, 20, 25 pounds. I think it may be worth a little bit more. It's a little bit more. That's 30 pounds. No, I think it's worth, I think it's worth at least 50-ish. I don't think so, David. Not yeah. for me, no. Uh, no, if you've got those expectations, then... Maybe 40-ish, then? Would you, would you settle for 40? I'll meet you in the middle, and I'll go £35. And that is going to be me done. Well... Because if it is worth 40, 50 quid, I've still got to sell it. Uh, uh, I'll accept that, thank you. Brilliant. Deal. Thank you. <laughs> I expected a little bit more, but actually I was quite happy with uh, what he, what he uh, gave me. Spot on with the price. What will I be doing with the Bollinger? I might drink it. That's no way to make a profit, Hoggy. Hello. Janet's got something vintage for Henry Nichols. I bought in a 1950s radio in the shape of a uh, rocket. I'm excited about it because it's the, probably the funkiest thing I've seen in a long time. Well, the minimum I'd like would be about £40 or more if I can get it. Let's see if this deal takes off. You've brought me in a fantastic, dare I say, iconic P1 
piece of radio equipment here. It's a rocket radio. Yes. How long have you had it? Well, it belonged to my late husband, and he obviously bought it in the 1950s. Yep. Have you had it working recently? No, or you no, it's always been in the cupboard. In the cupboard, just, yes, to, just and on that, show. That would explain the condition of it. I mean, it is in remarkably good condition, yes. even down to the chrome on the stand there. Yes. Let's have a look, see what it is. It's a Sharp BH351 model rocket radio. Yes. And this will be dating to probably the late 1950s, I would think. Mm -hmm. And the great thing about it is that this nose cone here yes. twirls around, twists around, so that you can pick up each different radio station. Mm. You've not had it working. I haven't heard right, it so working. We don't, right, so we don't know whether it does work. I mean, it's a transistor radio. Um, it'll be operated by battery, which will go inside the casing here. Yes. And obviously we've got the off off switch and the volume there. I just, I've never seen one no. of these no. before, ever. I no. just think it's absolutely wonderful. Mm -hmm. Good. So mm. why are you parting with it? Well, it might as well go to somebody that's really going to appreciate it. It's a good thing. Yes. I don't think there'll be any trouble finding somebody that's going to love it as mm. much as I do. Mm. So I think what I need to do is get some money on the table and see if I can tempt you into parting <laughs> with it. <laughs> 20, 40, 60 pounds. Right. What do you think of my offer of 60 pounds for a radio that we don't know whether it works? Well, I'd like advice from David, please. And here is the Duke. Well, 1959, as far as we can tell, this shop is. We've got between 40 and 80 pounds on both estimations. So right. 60 pounds, no deductions, in my opinion, it's music to my ears. <laughs> oh, really? Thank you, David. Right. I wish I had to ask him now. Because <laughs> <laughs> you were going well with that money. I was, well, it was, it's, a, it's a very, very good offer. Yeah. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to be very generous with you. Okay? I love it as an item. I really do love it as an item. I'm going to put another £10 on the table. So we've got £70. How do you feel about that? Um, Yes, I'm going to take it. You're going to take that as a deal? I am. Sure? Yeah. Fabulous. Thank you so much. I'm delighted. Thank you. Thank you. Henry was fabulous. He was really free and easy with his £20 notes. He certainly was, as you got £30 more than you wanted, Janet. Coming up, David's feeling the pressure. It's a double axe. It's two against one and it's not fair. And Jan tries her look. I know I paid about sixpence for it because yes. I didn't have any money much. So you don't mind a pound for it now. Welcome back to Dickinson's Real Deal from Stamford and Lincolnshire. We're straight back to the action. Elizabeth and granddaughter Sarah have brought something exquisite for David Tupman, and she's not going to stand for any nonsense. I would like to achieve £150 if possible. Vinaigrette is um, quite nice, but it's the sort of thing that if I buy it, I'm liable to lose it. It's not yours to lose yet. Your vinaigrette, Elizabeth? It is mine. I bought it many, many years ago in a second-hand shop. And you know what it was for, vinaigrette? Yes. When ladies felt a little faint, they would open the lid and take a little... A gentle sniff. Yes, exactly. Uh, and why who are you coming to, to sell it now? Well, unfortunately, my daughter and my grandchildren don't want it. You, do, you don't want to keep this lovely you know, silver I box? I would love to keep that little silver box, but I have too much stuff myself. OK. And um, if I can persuade you to part with it, have you got something in mind to spend the money on? Yes, myself. <laughs> no, me. <laughs> but mostly myself. Mostly yourself. OK. So let's have a little look at it. A very sweet little vinaigrette. Lovely that it's got a sort of concave foot. On the side, we have the hallmarks. And JW, I believe, is Joseph Wilmore. And, and the hallmarks uh, are for Birmingham 1804. Inside the box, we have the grill underneath which we have the actually yes, sponge smothered in some sort of scent. But unfortunately, the hinge is, is broken. But I think it could probably be repaired quite easily. 
very sweet little object. Right, money. Off you go. <laughs> All the way. And you'll tell me to stop if I put too much down. That's my oh, you can be assured of that. <clears throat> 20, 40, 60, 80 pounds. No, I would like a little more. I think that's quite a reasonable bid. What do you think, Sarah? I don't think that's going to be enough, to be I, honest. I, I think you were looking at least for £100, aren't you? I thought you were going to persuade Elizabeth to take my very generous offer. I would if it was generous, but I don't think it's generous enough. If it fetched £100 in Sarah, the person who bought it would have to pay about 120 and you get back about 80 But if you had someone that you could sell it to privately and you could get 120 you'd still have £30 yourself if you put another £10 on there. Yeah, I think, you'd do you know still, what I think you're asking You're worth it, it's, it's a double act. It's, it's two against one and it's not fair. But that's still allowing for you to make a profit. Let me see if I've got a teller. I'm sure you have. <laughs> I'm a happy bunny and so are you. So if you're happy, I'm happy. So thank you very well much for bringing it in. Sarah, thanks, I need for, to. <laughs> thanks for bringing Elizabeth <laughs> in. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> Remind us again how much you originally wanted, Elizabeth. For £150, if possible. You could have pushed a little harder, but never mind. Back in the den, Marion's brought in her furry friend, made by a famous German toy company named Schuko. I bought this little teddy bear I've got years ago, and I only paid six pence for it. As he's not very big, I'm hoping to pick him up rather reasonably. Size isn't everything, Jam. Would you like to tell me about your little friend today? Well, I've had him an awful lot of years, and I've been looking at him in the cupboard for a lot of years, but I'm afraid he's got to go. Why has he got to go? He's so small, he well, can't take up much space. I, he, I've got all dolls in my cupboard, all these big dolls and little dolls as well, but he's the only odd little teddy bear. And where did you find him originally? Where was he? I don't know whether I bought it rather at a jumble sale or um, a fate. I know I paid about sixpence for it because yes. I didn't have any money much in no. those days. So you don't mind a pound for it now? I would That's like. a good investment. It would be, Six yeah. To a pound. Yeah, I know it would. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's take a little look at him because yeah. he's so sweet. I mean, he's yeah. absolutely tiny. Yes. Although there's no mark on the bear marina, we're pretty mm. sure that it's by yes. Schuko from yes. Nuremberg in Germany. And I, I think, taking a guess, I think the bear would probably be about 50s or 60s. Was that tie yes. in approximately to when you bought him? It probably was, yes. I don't really know yeah. what to put down for him. No. From sixpence, mm. ten pounds. Oh. What do you think? I was hoping a, a little bit more than that. <laughs> so supposing I put down 15. Is that going to bring a smile to your face? No, I still think he's worth a bit more than that, yes. I still think so. And here comes David to give us some advice. Well, I've been looking at the paperwork and I'm just thinking to myself, how much is that teddy in the way? Well, he's a Shuko bear. They say 40 to 60, 50 to 70. Shuko is a good name. Mm. So somewhere 40, 45 right. around there, I mm. think would be a fair price. Oh, thank you. Not wanting to seem mean, I'm gonna take the five pounds away and I'm going to put down 40 pounds. What do you think about that? Just a little bit more. Is that getting nearer to the You're mark? A bit nearer, yes. If I put the blue one back, what do you think? Yes. You'd be happy with that, Marina? Yeah, yes. So if I put down another five pounds after what David said, do you think that's near enough yeah. to what you'd? I'm sure. I want you to go away happy. Yeah, I will be happy. Oh, thank, thank you, you again. Thank you thank so you. much. Thank you. Oh, it's wonderful. I've had a lovely day. Really enjoyed it. Well, how could I go home without him? Look at his cute little face. He's now going to reside with me till I get made a small little offer. Oh, a great big one. 1250, 1300. Coming up, our dealers have some difficult sellers on their hands. I'm not a greedy person, but I would like more than that. Who will come out on top? Welcome back to Dickinson's Real Deal from Stamford in Lincolnshire. 
John is up with Henry, and he's not messing about. Today I've brought in four diamond rings, and I'm not willing to leave for any less than £2,000. Wow, that's a lot of cash. How are you planning to get the money out of Henry? I'm going to push for as much as I can and, and keep a straight face and, and not let it get to me, basically. Good plan. But do you like them, Henry? I'm quite excited by these because there's one in particular that's a good size, so I'm going to have a go at buying them for sure. What's the story behind them? How have you come to, to get hold of them? Uh, my wife inherited them from her nan. Right. Um, passed away earlier this year. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. I mean, obviously the sentiment of value, but something that just sit there, basically. Right, so she never wears them, so you no. might as well get rid of them and, yeah. and use the money for something else. Yeah. Fabulous. Well, we've got four rings. We have just over here, we have a seven stone illusion set diamond ring. Now when I say illusion set, it's because the stones, the diamonds are set into a white metal to make them look bigger when the light hits them. We've got a four stone diamond ring here and a three stone diamond ring there, which the quality of those stones are not bad at all. The principal diamond that we've got here is this one. Now this is what they call a solitaire diamond ring. We'll just establish what metal it is. Yeah, 18 karat white gold. The stone itself is an old cut stone and it's of a good size as well. I'd say it's probably getting on for the carat 75, carat 80. It does have an awful lot of inclusions in it, which are uh, carbon deposits or what they call feathering, which is a natural fracture to the stone. Nevertheless, diamonds, they say, are a girl's best friend. The clarity, it is going to affect the value to the purists, but anybody that wants you know, a big showy stone, they're mm. going to be very interested in this. Yeah. Do you have expectations of what you'd like for them? Or? Yeah. You do? Yeah. Ah. So, I've got to be generous then. 50, 100, 150, 200, 250, 300, 250, 400, 450, 500, 550, 600, 650, 700, 750, 800, 850, 900, 950, 1000, 1050, 1100, 1150, 1200, 1250, 1300. 1300 pounds, John. I'd much rather be putting five times out on the table for a much better quality stand. David. <coughs> well, I don't know what you thought when you arrived today, John, or what you hope to be getting. Does that fit anywhere near to what you hope to get? Um, no, not really, no. It still sounds a bit low. We're looking at a two to two and a half thousand from both independent valuers and auctioneers. But stick with it, because this, this guy is a good dealer, he's a fair man, and he gives good prices, but maybe he's not that interested in this particular parcel. Let's see what happens. Thank you, David. Am I a million miles away from what you were hoping? I know what the, the auctioneers have said. Um, yeah. I mean, if, if I it mean, came, if they, if, if they sold for 2,000 at auction, we'd be looking at losing probably 20%. Yeah. 15 to 20%. Yeah. But I think that takes me to go 1,400, 1,500. There's a definite shake of the head there. That's at no chance. Um, 1,600 quid, there we go, that's where I want to be. Because I've got the job of, if I do buy them, I've got the job of trying to move them on. And I sure. think as much as the three will go quite quickly, that one will probably hang around a little bit longer. Okay. So it's your choice, young man. Deal. Deal? Yeah. John, you're a star. Thank, Thank you very you. much indeed. Thank you very much. Lovely to see you. And you. It's not the 2,000 you wanted, John. I was very, very close to taking it to auction, but at the end of the day, the money was on the table and I couldn't, I couldn't say no. Me and my family can go on holiday now. I've given enough money, in my opinion, for them. It's just down to the quality, but I bought them, so we'll see what happens. Back in the den, June is hoping to tempt David, David with her two Japanese enamel vases, or as the dealers call them, cloisonne. I really would like to get lots and lots of money, but I don't expect that I will. We'll wait and see what David has to offer. Let's hope he's feeling generous. You brought us in a pair of vases today. Can you tell us a bit about them? Um, I, I don't know an awful lot about them other than that they're Japanese and they're uh, cloisonne. 
and they've been in my husband's family for some time and that's how I've come by them. I keep offering them to my daughter and she says, oh no, just keep them mum. So today, if the price is right, then they're going. Right, okay. Well, let's have a little bit look at them. They are Japanese Clozone vases, about 1900 in date. With Clozone, what they did was they put the wires on the vase, and then filled between the wires with enamel, yeah. and then polished it off to have this wonderful smooth finish and the great patterns on the vases. In this case, we've got these dragons. Uh, and the wire in this case is silver wire. And they're actually very fine examples. At some stage, they've obviously been, both of them have been knocked over or dropped. And we can see here on this one, the chip in the enamel, you see? Yes, yeah, just a and, little bruise. And really. also, <laughs> well, it is a little bruise, but it's impossible to restore this. Yes. And to the people that collect these vases, it, it makes an enormous difference. That having been said, you know, they're lovely. Yes, they are. They really are lovely. Yes. All right, so let's put some money on the table. Yes, please. <laughs> now, what are you going to do with this money, if I... Uh... Um, well, as my daughter didn't want me to sell them, she said if I sold them, she'd go and buy them back. Well, I'll take a small profit. <laughs> <laughs> Send her in. I'll have to... 20, 40, 60, 80 pounds, 100 pounds, 120 pounds. No, thank you. I'd like much more than that. Much? Much more than that, yes. 140, 160, 180 pounds. No. I think if that's all that you're offering me, then I'd um, take them to the auction, I think. 200. Yes, it's still not as much as I would like. I'm, I'm not a greedy person, but I would like more than that. If they were perfect, I would certainly sort of give you £500 for them. That's my final offer. 250 you sure that's as much as you? That's price, absolutely my the last penny. Well, I think rather than go to auction, I'll um, deal with you. Uh, you yeah. sure? I don't want your, your daughter coming around and demanding more money off me with menaces. <laughs> You've heard of her, Rosie, have you? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I will have a deal. You sure? Yes. June, thank you very much. And thank thanks you. very much indeed for bringing them in. Thank you. June squeezed every pip out of me on the Pisani Vases. But I wanted them and uh, now I've got them. Well, I would have liked more, but I'm quite happy with what I've got. And I think we shall, the whole family will enjoy it. We'll do something special. Have a lovely time, June. Coming up, the Duke's going into battle. Yes, the sword's out. We're in the cavalry charge. We're coming along now. 9.50 now. Is victory in his sights? Find out after the break. Welcome back to Dickinson's Real Deal. Adrian's got a 19th century sword for Hoggy and he's going to fight for every penny. I don't think I'd walk away with anything less than seven, eight hundred. Do you fancy it, Hoggy? I like it. It looks like the Duke and auctioneer Colin Young are just as keen. You have to say it is a cut above the rest. Ooh. What do you know about it? Not a lot, really. Um, I believe it's a cavalry sword. Okay. I believe 18th, uh, 19th century, sorry. I'm not sure when. Yeah. Other than that, not really any clue. That's pretty good. That's not bad. This is just coming out of the Regency period, 1820s, around that area. Right. This blade here would have been used in action. And this decorative bit up here, this is called bluing. And where it looks like it's blue, it's not, it's actually where they've heated it really high and made it a lot harder and a lot, a lot more sturdy. Oh, right. Then after that, they would put all this gilding on. So all these little gilt emblems here are all to do with that period, like the, the royalty right. period and all these Latin things. They all mean something, which I don't know what they mean, but they all mean something to someone. 
then on the other side, you've got exactly the same, but just different markings. Yeah. Then you look at the handle, which is just superb. I mean, I just tip it up to you there so you can see it, but the crown on there. And then you've got the yeah. lion head on there. Oh, what? I've never noticed that. And then you've got the scabbard. Yeah. And then it just keeps getting better because you've got the maker as well. And Prosser is the maker. Right. And he worked out a Charing Cross from about 1810 to about 1840, I think. I don't know the exact dates, but he was a retailer and a manufacturer of good quality swords. Made them look good as well. Made them look good. Right. And when things look good, they make more money. That's what we like to hear. <laughs> Some antiques come up and just gently stroke you. Right. Some antiques come up and slap you on the face. This one would slap you on the face because it's just a nice bit of kit. Yeah. Why are you selling it? Um, to be honest, we've got a few items like this that, that they were my father's, and but yeah. most of them just sit in the loft, so there's not really Sad. any point in them being there. Colin, we've got a very nice late Georgian sword. I suppose okay. it's a cavalry sword. We've just looked at a couple of diagrams yeah. in books, and mm. that says late Georgian from about 1790 something. Perhaps this pattern is 1803. Yeah, of course, that's your starting point and obviously would have been produced um, for a number of years thereafter. Where are you going to place your estimation? Well, it's funny one estimation. I've put on this five to 800 um, and that's reflecting the condition of it. It, it really is in good order. Um, but at the same time, we find that buyers wise, the margins between the buyers and the collectors, they just seem to know within inches exactly what they are prepared to pay. Okay. So irrespective of our estimate, the market's going to decide on okay. this. Okay. Now, the independent valuers, they also have gone within that five to eight. Okay. I have no idea really, it's not my area, but I look at that and think, that doesn't sound expensive to me. That wouldn't surprise me if it got up to a thousand pounds. I don't know if Michael Hogburn is going to buy this. He tends to buy all things modern, but nevertheless, let's see what Michael puts on the table. So I'll make you an offer, Adrian, if that's uh, all right. Yeah. 20, 40, 60, 80, 100, 120, 140, 160, I'd like to pay for it. How does that feel? It's a nice start. Nice start. But I'm not interested on that. Want a bit more? I think so. I think I think it's worth a bit more. Than I'll that. go 180. Oh, no. I, I really think it's worth a bit more than that. Should we ask for David? Yeah, we could ask David. Well, oh. Adrian, um, Hoggy, uh, now, what we've got here is a, a late Georgian sword. Five to eight hundred is the estimation. I uh, apologise, Adrian. Area. It's not just <laughs> a, a, a dress sword, perhaps a 20th century dress sword, right. which you'd expect to pay this kind of money for. A few years ago, these were doing a lot better and might have climbed up over the thousand pounds. Right. Uh, so it probably is a kind of item, I'm going to say, because he's a mate of mine. This probably needs to go to the auction to find its level, to see what the current marketplace is like. Right. And I think the five to eight will fit to it very, very well. And from there, you can see if it exceeds that. So just not enough money at the moment. Well, I'm a little bit surprised at that. And I'm glad David came in because we can't know everything on this no. show. So I'll make that up to 200, 300, 400, 500 quid. It's still a bit low. Yeah. Have a little touch of it, Adrian. It's always nice to touch it. <laughs> have, a, have a feel. Yeah, it feels nice, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah. It's no. 500, no. No, it's not yours for 500. I really want to own it. <laughs> Keep going then. No, I'm going to stick at 500. Yeah? Yeah. We'll go to auction. You made the right decision. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Are you confident with this item? I'm confident with it and absolutely delighted to be able to stick a lot more on it. The offer of 500 was certainly worth thinking about, but I was just confident it was worth a bit more. I thought it was quite a good bid, considering it's not my field. But at auction, that could fly. It's off to auction, but will it fare any better? Why did you decide to go? Just because it is in such good condition mm. and it's, um, it's a rare item and 
I just think, because it was right at the bottom of the estimate, it was worth the gamble. Well, I think you're right. I think by the exceptional look and appearance to it, I think it's worth more than £500. But there is the commission to be involved, 15%. But the room is full. The question is, are the collectors, are the dealers here to compete with each other? Well, we hope they are, because I like it. You like it, Adrian. Yeah. Fingers crossed, we'll do well on this. It's coming up now. Lot number 30, let's get straight into the bidding at bottom estimate on it of 500. We have a telephone, we have multiple telephones. Interesting, we've got multiple telephone bids. That means there are several telephone bidders against the room. Six, six and 50 now. 600, 650 now to see, 650. 700, 750 now. 750, 800. Yes, the sword's out. We're in the cavalry charge. We're coming along now. 950 now. 9.50 now, 9.50 at 9.50 bid. 1,000 now, surely, at 9.50 on the net. We'll move now to the telephones. At 9.50, 1,000 on the internet. 1,100 now, do I see? 11 now, 11, 12 if you like, 12, 13 now. Yes. 1,400, either telephone, 1,400. 1,400 with Mr. Doubleday's client at 1,400. 15 now, do I see? 1,500 on the internet. 1600 commission bidder. Do I see 17? 17 on the telephone. 1700 pounds. At 1700, offer 50. Are we all done? I have an 1800 bid all. 1800 on the internet against the telephone. The telephone is out now unless they come back with a bid. It does, thank you very much. 1850. At 1850 now, have another one. Do a bit of sabre rattling. No? At 18.50, it's on the telephone then. Last call from the room. Are we all done? Selling at 1,850. 1,850, so 1,850 pounds. Now that's the gross price. Yeah. There is, of He's course, to take that. away the commission. I made that about 1,570 pounds you'll be going home with. What's your first reaction? It's brilliant. Absolutely yes. awesome, yeah. That's really the first good. reaction. That, that was the dream. Yeah. Okay, well, I think it was well worth the dream. What are you going to do with the money? Or does it go back to Mum? No, Mum's kindly said that we can can have it. I think, I, well, I was talking to my brother the other day and possibly about us all going away somewhere as brothers. Okay. As a bit of a, yeah, a, bit of a family holiday. Okay, fine. So, how many like brothers? That, three, four in total. Okay, four in total. Three. So, the brothers, the brothers, yeah. they could be going away with £1,570. That is a great holiday, that is a real deal. What a fantastic price. Wow, it really is, David. But did our dealers cash in on their treasures from today? In last place is Hoggy, as he only bought the 1920s champagne for £35. Spot on with the price. But he still hasn't managed to shift it. Maybe he'll drink it after all. Jan had a tough day too. She was smitten with the bear she got for 45 quid. How could I go home without him? Look at his cute little face. It may have been adorable, but it only made a tenner. And sticking with tiny things, David was worried about the vinaigrette he splashed 90 pounds on. So I think there's a small profit in it. That's if I don't lose it, of course. He was dead right. He was worried about the damage to the Japanese enameled vases. If they were perfect, I would certainly sort of give you 500 pounds for them. But he paid half of that and sold them on for £320. As for Henry, he splashed the cash on the 1950s radio. I'm going to be very generous with you. I'm going to put another £10 on the table, so we've got £70. Luckily, it didn't cost him his profit. He also laid down a massive £1,600 for the four diamond rings. And I think as much as the three will go quite quickly, that one will probably hang around a little bit longer. But he was wrong. He sold them all and made the most out of all the dealers today. Of course I'm dealer of the day. What else would you expect? But that's nothing compared to Adrian. He turned down Hoggy's offer of 500 quid for his 19th century cavalry sword. To gamble in the auction. It's just swept in at £1,850. And he'll be taking home, after the deduction of commission, £1,570. Now, that is the real deal. Don't forget to join me, David Dickinson, next time.
for Dickinson's Real Deal. TTFN, ta-ta for now.